Hi, my name is Kristen. I'm the coordinator of the Fungal Diversity Survey's West Coast Rare Fungi Challenge. I live in Fairbanks, Alaska, so I made this presentation to highlight the rare fungi here in the north. The Rare Fungi Challenge is an initiative started in 2020 to document rare, underdocumented, or potentially threatened mushroom species in North America. The West Coast Challenge currently has 20 species, which were selected by a team of mycologists for their diversity, ease of identification, and also beauty or charisma. These are some pretty interesting mushrooms. The goals of this project include generating data about where the fungi occur and where they fruit, increasing awareness of the need for fungal conservation, and collecting high quality specimens and DNA sequences, which can then be used by researchers, and protecting fungi. Um, there's so much emphasis on animals and plants when you're thinking about uh, species that could go extinct, but mushrooms can go extinct too. There's just not a lot of uh, data about that. There are 20 species in the challenge, as I said before, and four of those occur in Alaska. We found in Canada too, in some parts of the Northwest. So after this presentation, hopefully you'll be able to identify those four species. We'll go through them one by one. And those species are the Lactarius cordovaensis or cordova milk cap, uh, willow gloves, ghost funnel, and Arrhenia lobata. So hopefully if you see these in the future, you'll be able to recognize them and know what steps to take. So the Cordova milk cap, Lactarius cordovaensis. This is a uh, large gilled mushroom. The cap is between seven and 13 centimeters in diameter. It oozes a milky juice when cut, giving it the nickname milk cap. That juice stains the flesh purple and the stalk has some pock marks on it. It's only known from two locations in Cordova, Alaska. So it's listed as data deficient. We just don't know if it's really rare until more people look for it. So help us look for it in the fall, uh, wherever you are, if you're in Alaska, Canada. Um, it was growing in like a place where a glacier had receded. So maybe microclimates like that. Uh, Stereopsis humphreyi, or the ghost funnel. This is a really delicate, pure white mushroom with a cap and stem, but no gills or pores. It's extremely smooth underneath the cap. The ghost funnel has been found in British Columbia and Southeast Alaska in coastal Sitka spruce forests, usually along trail edges. It also fruits in the fall. Willow gloves or Hypocreopsis lichenoides is a really bizarre ascomycete fungus. It looks like a cluster of orangish brown fingers, usually radiating from a central point. It grows on willows and is actually a parasite of another fungus, the tobacco brown crest fungus. Since willow gloves is so tough and hard, you can find it year round. It's a persistent fruiting body. Arrhenia lobata, the lobed oysterling. Uh, it's this small, wrinkly, gelatinous mushroom. It kind of looks like a mouse's ear growing on moss. It parasitizes living moss and usually grows in very wet, cold areas like alpine springs or bogs. Uh, and it fruits early in the year, like spring or early summer. It has a really wide range, has been found all the way from the Northwest Territories in Northern Canada to high elevations in California. But some of those cold mountain wetlands are disappearing due to climate change. So the lobed oysterling is considered near threatened. If you are lucky enough to find any of these mushrooms or really any other mushrooms that you think are interesting, here are the steps to take. The first, photograph the mushroom from all sides, including cut, uh, usually like cut lengthwise to document any staining reactions. Remember the lactarius that has that milky juice. Uh, get a shot of the habitat and nearby trees as well. That can be really important uh, ecological information. Then collect the mushroom with a piece of the substrate, ideally a little chunk of what it's growing on, and dehydrate it. I use a regular food dehydrator that you use for drying fruit, uh, but a screen on a sunny window would work. What works best is having moving air. So that airflow takes the moisture away from the mushroom. When the mushroom is so dry that it cracks if you bend it, then you seal it up in a bag with the date and the identification number. So the observation number, uh, will you'll find that once you upload it to either inaturalist.org or mushroomobserver.org. Those are both uh, websites where you can add your observations. And then once you do that, at the end of the URL of your observation is a unique number. 
So that is your iNaturalist number or your mushroom observer has its own unique identifying number. So make sure you write that number either on the bag or include it in a data slip with the collection. Uh, don't let the collection get separated from that number. Also be sure to stay informed of the collection rules or permit requirements of the specific land that you're visiting, especially national parks or some state parks, you might need a permit to collect mushrooms there. For more step-by-step -step instructions and tutorials, you can follow this link taken to our website. And I just wanna emphasize that having high quality observations is very important for future research so that with these specimens, um, we can learn more that will eventually lead to their conservation. You can also read a lot more information about each of the rare 20 species at this website. This is uh, fundus.org slash protect slash take hyphen action, the take dash action. And you can find some downloadable pamphlets there to print, uh, take into the field or to share with your friends and read uh, more detailed descriptions of all the 20 species, including the four found in Alaska. Oh, also a shout out to the biodiversity database. So this is a larger project, larger than the rare fungus challenges uh, to uh, make a collection of every mushroom of North America. That's the goal. So we have um, all these excellent photos, uh, mushrooms that have been collected and that can be used by researchers, super useful for science and conservation. So the, the fungal biodiversity database will accept any species, not just the rare 20 uh, challenge. So again, I'm Kristen and we are volunteers with the Fungal Diversity Survey. I hope you're able to identify a few more rare fungi now and you can email me at westcoast underscore rare at fundus.org if you'd like to volunteer or get more involved. Thank you so much.